Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we've got episode number 33 for you, and we are kicking it back off on the start of the episode. We're bringing basketball back to the forefront because we had the emergency pod, right? Episode 32, big Damian Lillard trade. The Celtics saw that and said, we just, we just can't allow them to get better, and we're just going to sit there and, and stay the same. Thanks. So they went out, and they made a big splash move, and they went out, and they got Drew Holiday. And they might really have the best defensive lineup we've seen in a very, very long time. Like, I went and looked at that starting five, and I was like, bro, one through four? Clamps. Clamps. Everything. Clamps. Straight Switch clamps. Clip. And, bro, Derek White's bald now. You know that's a plus two <laughs> defense. You notice a plus two to that defense. Them, them slides about to be crazy. Oh, D. Uh, so we're going to get into that that trade first and, and talk through Bucks celtics matchups. Who's the real top dog in the East if you're looking at it on the screen? You see I got that as one of the bullet points because we got to talk about that now because I've seen mixed opinions. I, I think a lot of people were sold on the Bucks being title favorites after the Lillard trade, but I've seen some people flip to the Celtics. I don't know. We're, we're going to yeah. talk. We're going to get into that for sure, but. I think it's definitely a conversation to be had. And then on the back half of the episode, we're going to get into all things week four and definitely touch on the Monday night football game, Seahawks versus Giants, which I don't know, man. If you're a Giants fan, I don't know. I know a couple of Giants fans. Know. They are not doing well mentally. <laughs> hey, They're- hey, what did I say when we did the NFC East episode? I said by the end of the season, Daniel Jones is going to be the worst quarterback in the NFC East. I thought it was going to be because Sam Howell was going to assert himself, which he kind of has. He's been playing well. Aside from that that game against uh, Buffalo, he's been playing really well. But, I mean, it ain't hard when Daniel Jones is playing like that, bro. And I'll tell you one thing. They both don't got no protection. So, I mean. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I guess you could say Howell got more weapons, but Sam Howell been making it work. I'm not going to lie. He's been been showing some flashes. Daniel Jones has been Daniel Jones got weapons, too. He has some he has some solid ones, I'm not gonna lie, but we'll get into that. We'll get yeah, into we'll, that. We'll definitely get into all that. <laughs> Let's get the housekeeping out of the way first, as always. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and follow the socials at off the glass pod on Instagram, at off the glass podcast on TikTok. Head over to the audio platforms, leave us a five-star rating, pre-download the show. We're we're gonna we're gonna get into it. Like we said, we're gonna start with the Drew Holiday trade. So let me go ahead and pull up the full details of the trade but in case y'all are unaware obviously drew holiday was traded to the portland trailblazers as a part of the damian lillard trade um and i think it was pretty evident from the get-go that the trailblazers were not planning on keeping uh drew holiday they were going to flip him for more assets right away um he did not show up to portland immediately after the trade like deandre Aiden did um so pretty clear and evident they were going to flip him a lot of teams threw their name in the hat from what was being reported, the Celtics being one of them. But similarly to the Dame trade, I think to a lot of people, uh, I don't think people were expecting them to, to put the assets together to go get a guy like Drew Holiday because to make the money match, people were saying off the rip, you know, you have to put in Brogdon and Robert Williams to make the money match. And so you know, where they're going to trade Time Lord in the reigning sixth man of the year. No, nah, they did exactly that. Literally. They pulled the trigger immediately. So the full trade, the Celtics are getting Drew Holiday. Blazers get Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, a 2024 first round pick, which is the Warriors pick. And that pick is top four protected, which means if the Warriors somehow end up in the bottom four, Um, or in the top four of the draft this year, it will actually convey to a 2025 first round pick. And then they're getting a 2029 first round pick from the Celtics. So altogether, the haul that Portland has got essentially just for Damian Lillard is um, to me so much better than what the Heat. It's not even close anymore. I think getting eight in in and of itself, like with the picks that they got from Milwaukee, that in and of itself was better than Hero and Jovic and any combination of picks. And you could throw in Jaime Jaquez, I don't care. It's just from a fit perspective, you get a former first round pick who, when he's at his best, bro, the 20 and 10, you can't ask for much more. And he's going to be somewhere where he's he wanted to be able to demand the ball in the post, get his touches. He doesn't have to try to become screen and roll man and, and fit into what the, the, the Suns are wanting of him. 
Mm-hmm. So that alone felt like it was better. And then like to go out and get Robert Williams, like one of the best defensive bigs in the league. And I know you've seen that report before. Aiden said he feels like he's a natural born power forward. You could play the both of them together. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much it's gonna work, but I mean, because hey, Aiden Aiden loves his little pick and pop mid range, little float. It don't got to be all right up and close to the basket. You definitely can make some work between the two of them, um, and I think they can complement each other in spurts a ton. Like I said you're adding in Malcolm Brogdon, reigning six man uh, of the year. He potentially could get flipped later on because guys like that. All contending teams are going to want a guy that can come off right. and manage your second unit. So this might not even be the end of the assets that um, the the Blazers get from this Damian Lillard deal. So honestly, a masterclass really from Joe Cronin and flipping an asset and really hard setting the rebuild and kicking it off the right way. So shout out to him. He's definitely making the right moves, but how do you feel? What is the your feeling right now for the Celtics? They went and revamped with Chris Apps earlier in the offseason, and they took it a step further to match the Bucks and go out and get Drew Holiday and, and kind of fill the void that had been left by Marcus Smart. Kind of seemed like, you know, Derek White might step into that, you know, primary point of attack role. But now you've got arguably the best point of attack defender in the whole NBA. And yeah. realistically, last season – a clearly better defender than Marcus Smart as well. Oh, yeah, so for sure. Kind of upgraded in that sense now, Marcus Smart being the heart and soul of the Celtics, you can't necessarily replace that. But in terms of on-court ability, right now in 2023, I would take Drew Holiday over Marcus Smart 10 times out of 10. Um, yeah. So how do you feel about the Celtics and then in this particular move and where they stack up now compared to Milwaukee? I mean, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I like it. I like the move. Um, I like Drew Holiday going there because, so like in Milwaukee, Drew Holiday was kind of needed to be like that. That scoring was needed from him. You know what I mean? That perimeter scoring was definitely needed from him. In Boston, obviously, is going to be a great plus the abil- his ability to score offensively as well. But he's there to be, like you said, that point of attack defender and just um and run the point guard for them. Like actually be a guy that can facilitate, help get these guys the ball to Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, things like that. And then we talked about it already, like just defensively, that starting lineup alone defensively is insane. Um, so obviously, at the end of the day, when you add a player like Drew Holiday, what he's going to be able to bring to the Boston Celtics, it's a great deal from that aspect. Um, the thing that worries me just a little bit is the fact that you have to give up one of your big men, which, mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, if Chris Stops and Al, Al Horford is healthy come playoff time, I don't think it's going to matter much. But that's the question. Are they going right. to be healthy? Al Horford is a little bit older. Kristoff has an injury history. So from that aspect, it worries me a little bit. But again, you could say Robert Williams has injury history as well. Like he's most of the time he's always hurt. So mm-hmm. from that aspect, it's a little bit tough. Um, from a depth aspect, giving up Malcolm Brogdon. I mean, at the end of the day, it slides Derek White off the bench. So, I mean, it, again, it's still... It, they're going to be fine, like, especially come playoff time. It's like you're playing, what, seven guys? It's not like you need 10 to go 10 deep all the time with your depth. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as people stay healthy, it's going to be good. But, again, you can really say that about every team in the NBA as long as they're healthy. So, I guess you can't really knock them for that. The Like I said, just the big men depth is a little worrisome for me. But as far as just their starting lineup and the key guys are going to have coming off the bench and Derek White and some of these other guys – obviously one of the top teams in the East. And like I've said it before, I thought the Bucks was like clearing away the best team as soon as they got Damian Lillard. There's an argument now. Like I, mm-hmm. there's definitely an argument. I'm not saying I'm completely flipping, but there's 100% argument between the, the Celtics and the Bucks. The one thing we do know for sure is they clear the Sixers. Like they <sighs> jumped them. Like before it was always like, oh yeah, those top three teams. It's a two-team race right now in the East. Yeah. There's no one else in the East that can even compete with either of these two teams. That I think I was listening to Through the Wire before this trade went down, and they were talking about this – so this is before Draw Days, even on the Celtics, they were talking about trying to include the Sixers in that top tier. And he's like, no, absolutely not. They're I think not he, they were talking about a hypothetical, had Dame even going to Miami, would they be – would the Sixers be able to compete? And, like, I think D. Mills was trying to be like, yeah, you know, like, it would be a hard for a series. Everybody else on the panel was like, no. No, it would not, bro. The Sixers are not. They're, they're not, not in that there class, anymore. bro. They they have to prove it to me before I ever put them in that class again. 
They everyone has everyone all the top teams in the east have gotten better. And right. <laughs> James Harden still ain't showed up to training camp yet. Supposedly he's supposed to as I guess come tomorrow, but he was in the club with a Daryl Morey is a liar sign. So I don't know if much has changed, bro. <laughs> yeah, they, they got the they got internal problems over there, but they're not even right. in this conversation right now. Yeah. Um, but to your point, I think I agree. The the front court depth is a little concerning. Um in terms of health, again, Chris Ops does have the injury history. Granted, last year was, I think, his healthiest season in a very long time, um, arguably the best season of his career as well. Um, we saw a big step forward from him in terms of actually identifying and taking advantage of mismatches in the post because there were times in the past where some of those scrappy guards, guys like a Marcus Smart or a Drew Holiday, would effectively guard him in the post, which is unacceptable. It off unacceptable if you're seven foot three yeah that pisses me <laughs> oh i hate seeing stuff like that bro. right <laughs> um so you know maybe you know things are good from him like i said if he can stay healthy um like he did last season um i think he's a underrated rim protector he's not the greatest rim protector in the world but he's a solid I, I, solid isn't even enough he's an above average rim deterrent center just off of his sheer size alone you're still gonna have al horford who I think he's going to be 39 this year, right? Damn. 37. He's going to be. He's going to be I was about to say he's 37. 39. <laughs> he's 37. I swear I thought he was older, but he was still 37. Yeah, that's still like pushing. by the if they make it to the NBA finals, he'll turn 38. His birthday is right at the beginning of June, so he's Damn. he's getting up there um, in age. And then you know they they have some guys on very you know small deals who I think have a chance to come in and make an impact here. Guys like Sam Hauser, who we know can shoot the skin off the ball. He showed it last year. Um, even Luke Cornett, Mr. You know, jump in front of the rim contest man. Um, he, he had flashes last year of being a solid big for them off the bench. They went out and got um, Shivy McKay Luke as well. They signed uh, Nemes Keita, who was the, the runner up in the G League for MVP. Um, they went out and got Delano Banton, who's a six, seven lengthy guard. So it's like they, they have a lot of guys on some prove it deals. You get one or two of them to hit. You're already looking at like a solid nine man rotation. So I'm not too, too concerned about the front court depth right now, but to your point, an injury to Chris Stapps or Al Horford does leave a really, really big hole. And then you're looking at some of these guys. I think they also just picked up Wenyan Gabriel too. Um, so you're, you're going to be he looking sucks. at, <laughs> yeah, I, I watched him closely. He sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to be looking at somebody to have to step up. Um, in that case, I forgot. Oh my gosh. His team has Jordan Walsh too, who looked great in summer league. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. so this, the defense is just crazy. Can we talk about drew holiday at the one Derek white at the two? Jalen Brown at the three, Jason Tatum at the four, and Chris Stapps at the five. Bro. That's a whew, that's a tough line to go against, man. Oh that defense my is a lock. Gosh. That is crazy. Like that is one of the most formidable defensive lineups we've seen. Like I said, I in a very long time, I really have to sit here and think about. To bet, like the first one that comes to mind is like 04 Pistons, like that defense headed up by Ben Wallace. Obviously, they don't have the same kind of interior presence, but we have not seen this amount of perimeter defense all in one place in a long time. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm very, very excited to see um, this team together. The one knock that I can add is I, I think when we talked about this before with the Celtics, we've always felt like they were missing that true floor general, that true point guard. Does Drew fit that mold? Not exactly. Mm -hmm. um, he brings a lot of other positives to the floor that are still going to be good for this team and make them better move that needle. Um, but from a pure playmaking perspective, um, there's still something to be desired there that was not filled with the signing. But I said – who knows? I am very, very interested to see how this team shakes out. Because and Payne Pritchard is still here too. Maybe he has a, a prominent role as like a you know microwave score for them off the bench. Because 
I think didn't he request a trade last season trying to go somewhere where he could get a better role? He wanted more minutes, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that just just freed a little bit up for him to to come in and, and be able to try to score something off the second unit. But um yeah, I, I I'm excited to see the Celtics team. And what I'm really excited to see now, honestly, and like Milwaukee Portland is gonna be cool. I need to see Milwaukee Boston. Milwaukee Boston is gonna be you need to watch every single game of that, every single second of that game. That's gonna be mm-hmm. amazing to see. But uh if I'm <clears throat> Drew Holiday, man, I, I helped y'all get a chip. Oh, yeah, no, I'm I was just, I was just, up. Like, I was um, just the second best player on this team, and, and I, I, I gotta get rid of me. No, I ain't, I ain't going, that ain't going. All I know, if I'm Drew Holiday, we go into that series. I'm locking him up. His, I'm mm-hmm. going 94 feet all game. But nah, it's it's gonna be great to see, man. I just, I mean, the Celtics have no excuses, man. At this point, like Jason Tatum is smack dab in the middle of his prime. Jalen Brown is the highest freaking paid person on the planet. Like, yep. <laughs> like, bro, like it's just it's there's no excuses. You know what I mean? You guys went all in. Like this is your your time period. You gotta go all in right now. You made the big moves. You got Kristaps. You got Drew Holiday. And like matchup wise, I mean, you guys match up really well against the Bucks. It's like, they, uh, they got Damian Lillard. That's great. Like, you guys, we just talked about, they have so many perimeter defenders. At the end of the day, you're not going to stop Damian Lillard, but you have so many people, so many bodies you could throw at him. Um, Giannis, I mean, he's Giannis. He's going to get his, which you guys still have. Like I said, if Kristaps and Al Horford stay healthy, you have the length to at least make it a little bit tough on them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, matchup-wise, you guys match up really great. And at the end of the day, you guys are not all just defenders. Like you still have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who are the right. lead scorers, and Drew Holiday who can also score if needed. Derek White who can shoot the can shoot the ball. Um, so yeah, like matchup wise, you guys actually like if I'm a Celtics fan, I think like I got the best. We're the best team in the East. But if I'm a Bucks fan, I also think we're the best team in the East. So like <laughs> it goes back and forth, really. Yeah, I uh, I I think there's a valid argument for people to say that the Celtics are the top dog now in the Eastern Conference. I think for what my money's mer- mo- what my money's worth, I still would lean towards Milwaukee. That Dame and Giannis combination to me, being able to retain Chris and Brooke alongside with that, you still got guys like Bobby Portis coming off the bench. Pat Connaughton sounds like he may end up just sliding in at the the two spot for them, which fits perfect. Lengthy guy can shoot, can play defense. What more can you ask for when you're playing with Damian Lillard and Giannis? Like, that's all you would want. So, right now, I would still lean the Bucks, but this Drew Holiday trade to the Celtics, I moved. The needle is moved. I moved. I am so excited for the NBA season to start. Actually, matter of fact, bro, when do they play? <clears throat> yeah, I need that. Let me know right I need now. All their game close circle. To schedule. I hope that it's not like I want it to be early in the year. Wednesday, November 22nd. It's and it's already on ESPN. Perfect. Need that. Need Immediately. That. That's perfect. It gives that what that, that's like it's like a solid like 15 games into the season. It's not yeah. you know, no team. Now y'all got, got some chance to get acclimated to each other. Perfect. That's the chemistry, perfect. right? You know, play a couple right. games, a couple games on your belt. Yeah, I need that. Need that ASAP. Definitely. Um, I also want to touch on one more thing. Um, going back to Damian Lillard specifically, uh, a report came out that Blazers GM Joe Cronin, um, essentially after Damian Lillard requested a trade and, and said that he wanted to go to Miami, you know, they heard Miami out. They really weren't thrilled with Miami, Miami's initial offer. Those talks kind of died down. Lillard came back to Joe Cronin again. This is all, you know, allegedly reported. We don't know for certain, but it sounds like this is what happened behind closed doors. Went back to Joe Cronin and said, look, if you can't get me to Miami, I'll take the trade offer away. I'd rather just come back here. And Joe Cronin said, no, it's no going back now. You said you wanted out. We're going to trade you. And turned away, in my opinion, the best player in franchise history. You can make the argument for Clyde. Okay, I'll say it's Damian Lillard. And so they... Stood firm, which I think takes a lot of guts to turn away. At worst, the second best player, the best player in the last 30 years for your franchise, the face of Portland sports, because there's no other pro sports 
really in Oregon, <laughs> like in, like many any of the major four sports. So to turn him away and say we are no, we're going into the rebuild takes a lot of guts. I think some people took it as disrespect. How could you do that to somebody who did so much for your organization and was so loyal? What I say, how many times have we said that this should have happened years ago? How many times has Damian Lillard said he wants to win? He wants to win. He wants to be somewhere where he can win. It's not going to happen in Portland, bro. Everyone in the world can see the writing on the wall. So I respect that he took the time and sat there and said, no, we're doing the rebuild because that's what's best for our organization. That's what gives us the best chance to win in the future. And he went through with it. And then, like we said, has gotten a plethora of assets and may not be done. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Because I've seen people say that they feel like it was a little disrespectful to turn Dame away if he said he wanted to come back. Nah, it's not disrespectful at all. At the end of the day, <clears throat> they're doing what's best for your their organization and what's best for Damian Lillard. Like, I think it's disrespectful if he sent him to freaking the Wizards. Like, yeah, that would be they, crazy. Like, if they sent him somewhere where he has no chance to win and you're just like sending him away, then it's all right, cool. But you're in Milwaukee with playing with Giannis. You're fine, bro. Like, you'll be okay. Like, I hate this and acting like like they got a baby, this guy. Like, bro, yeah, you didn't go to Miami. You went to probably a not a probably, better a better situation. Right. Like, just because it's not where you wanted to go. I mean, the only, only thing you could be mad about is the fact that it's Milwaukee and not Miami. Like, the city was wise. Right. That's the only it, thing you could be It's going to snow. It's going to get cold. Get that yeah. bubble jacket out. You'll be all right. You'll be fine, bro. A lot of people don't even – NBA players don't even live in a city in the summertime or in the offseason. Right. They, they be going to Miami anyway, L.A. and all that. You'll be yeah. fine. But at the end of the day, the rebuild was necessary. The rebuild was needed. Um, the writing, like you said, the writing been on the wall. They've been needing to do this for years already. So like, I'm, I'm actually very happy that they like put their foot down and was like, nah, there's no going back. We drafted Scoot. Um, cause at the end of the day, they're not like two, what, six, two guards, six, one, six, two guards. Granted, their games are a little bit different. I don't want them on the same team. I don't want them. Just give Scoot the keys, please. Just give right. him the keys. Give all these other young players the keys. Just let them develop. Let them grow. Cause I like the young team that they have over there now with all mm-hmm. the assets that they get back. So it's no point of just trying to force it, trying to have Damian Lillard come back and waste the rest, the rest of his career. And you know, you guys are knowing you're not going to win a championship with him. It's like, just go full rebuild, bro. Right. Don't just rip the bandit off. So like I said, Damian Lillard got sent to a great situation. So this whole, it's disrespectful, feel bad. He's fine, bro. I guarantee you, when it, if he wins a championship, he will be fine. And he'll be happy he got traded. And if he wins a championship, I know I'm not the biggest on these legacy debates, legacy arguments. That does a lot for him. <clears throat> oh, that yeah, for does sure. a lot for him. For sure. For a guy that has played such a, at a high level for so – the fact – when you think about it, he's made the 75th all-time team without really the big playoff success, like only made the conference finals one time speaks to just how good of an individual he performer he's been on a team that has been underwhelming for so long. Man, I'm just oh, – we get to see Damian Lillard playoff basketball, like meaningful playoff late in the playoffs, mm-hmm. like Eastern Conference basketball, bro. That's – bro, you know how many times – well, you see, we watched Damian Lillard in the first round going crazy, but it's like it's the first round. He got no help. <laughs> but, bro – he has two not game winning, series winning buzzer beaters. Who who's doing that? That's what I'm saying, bro. And like, bro, you we get to see this in like crucial moments, potentially the finals, like Eastern Conference Finals at worst. Oh, this is amazing, I, bro. I can't wait, I'll, bro. Honestly, bro, let's just let's just let them play like 20 games and let's just go to the playoffs. Right. <laughs> hey, let's just, we we know who the good teams are. We know what the season's <laughs> gonna be like, bro. We good. Just play like 20 games and let's boom. We play off basketball. Let's go. Man, I can't I'm locked wait. In. I can't wait. Oof. I can't wait. And bro, preseason starts on Thursday. Man, it's that quick. That's your crazy. boy Anthony Edwards is gonna be playing in Abu Dhabi against Luca. Why are they playing the Abu Dhabi? Bro, you know the NBA trying to make that international money. Got to get to Saudi Arabia. They giving out, they giving out billies with a B over there, bro. That's wild. 
that's wild. But man, it's this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be no. good. This and is I, already shaping up to be a fantastic NBA season, bro. And, and I let listen, Boston, and Milwaukee, y'all beat each other up in the playoffs. And then we'll be waiting for the Lakers in the yeah. finals. We got beat down, wore down from that bloody seven game series. Y'all gonna get out of your legs is tired. We're gonna be coming back from our sweep of the Denver Nuggets, and we're gonna be. Fine. Uh, see, I'm I'm so glad you brought that up because I know you, <laughs> I know you saw that Anthony Davis clip. <laughs> Wait, I didn't see it. Wait, which one? Oh, we were, he, he was getting interviewed for media day. And he was like, you know, the Nuggets. We heard him like they was talking. There was a lot of talk about. You know, they disrespect or whatever. And, you know, our names kept coming up after. And so, like, he said, I, I talked to Braun and, you know, we ready. We got something for him. Oh, yeah. I can't oh, wait. <laughs> okay. My boys is ready. That's real bold for a team that got swept. But yeah. I respect it. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, they can talk all year. I'm telling you, we coming back. We're not going for that this year. We're not going. AD is locked in. AD is playing minimum 70 games. Lock it in. 70 games. He's locked, 70 bro. He's with an locked. S? 65. 65. Okay. <laughs> he's going to he's going to he's going to get the requirements. He's going to okay. hit 65. <laughs> but bro, come playoff time, bro, it's up. I'm telling you. The revamp team full We don't even need to get in the Lakers, bro. I can, I can go on a whole rant about that, bro. We just know we locked in. Okay. Um another thing I want to talk about for media day. We we can't go without talking about it. <sighs> bro, uh there's Jimmy Butler, media day <laughs> shenanigan. It's gone too far. The dreads last year, that was funny. This was scary. I was scared. <laughs> I, I, bro, he's just such a clown, bro. Like, I don't, <laughs> now, I, I think it's, I genuinely just think it's funny because he knows that that picture is going to be used all year, bro. Like, bro. <laughs> that I, was the first <laughs> thing I thought about. Like, could you imagine being a Miami Heat social media person and it's like, you gotta, you gotta get everything ready for the media day booklets and like this is the, this is what you're gonna use on opening night on TNT. This is this little picture. It's, I'll be editing, photoshopping this. Like, bro, what is going on here, <laughs> like, bro? Like, but we can't use the old one. Like, it gotta be this one. <laughs> There's no way. If ESPN or TNT puts that man on the screen with the little bayang <laughs> and the eyebrow piercing, nah, bro, y'all nah, sick he- for that. He's top troll, bro. He's a top troll because that's right. actually like, I like that stuff. I think about like, what if somebody did that? I never would think somebody would actually have like the balls to do that. Like yeah. that's actually hilarious, bro. He's a clown for that. Yeah. All, all jokes aside, I do respect him for sticking to the binge. To being, I think he told. There's a clip of him talking with Bam, and Bam was like, "Bro, the Pearsons is taking it over the top." He was like, "It's Halloween to me." This is like yeah. now. Now I'm excited for next year's media day. What you got to one up this? What you about to do, bro? Yeah, uh, you got you got to keep it going at this hey, point. Like you got to go even further. Bro. I don't. What is what? What more can you do at this point? This dude got a perm in his head and put piercings on. He got to like grow his beard out and like shave his head and become like a monk or something like so that. So what if he just pulled up with the Scabaldi? Yeah, fact. <laughs> it's just like just bald and then shave everything though. Like shave like the beard. Mustache, everything, eyebrows, shave it all, and then just boom, <laughs> and then just boom, and then cut like it's gonna grow all grow back. But like he's gonna be like playoffs, locked in. It's gonna be the the pictures <laughs> on the screen, and it's just him with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man, Jimmy, Jimmy is hilarious. Jimmy is hilarious for that. He's a clown. Uh, another funny media day moment. I don't know if you saw the video of Jokic walking into media day with his hands in his pockets. He, he looked like me <laughs> walking into work. Bro. Right. He looked like he hate his job. <laughs> Man, I need this paycheck. It's just he's so like, sad with his head down. <laughs> he's like, bro, oh, my God, bro. He's sick of the NBA. He's right. sick of the media, bro. He saw he said he like he touched the basketball like a couple of times. Like he barely. Yeah. I, I genuinely believe it. I All think right. like he leaves and he's just like, bro. I'm chilling. Don't ask me about basketball. Don't ask me about work. None of that. Oh, he with his horses. What he need a basketball for? But he really treats it like, I, I, and I knew it was like that. But once he won the chip, and was just like, "Yep, all right, good job." <laughs> good and, job he's, team. and he's getting the pass for it because obviously he's the reigning Finals MVP, reigning champion. Because when AD said, "Yeah, I, I ain't touched the basketball in a couple months." It was outrage. It Stephen was a, a is big... on Stephen A's on first take talking. He's going crazy. He went on a whole rant talking about 
you're pathetic, you're wasting time, wasting LeBron James' career. Bro, he low key be on AD a little too much, bro. Like when he was laughing about AD getting a concussion, I'm like, bro, relax, bro. Like, bro, he's always talking about AD's not gonna play this many games. Why are you so worried about this guy? Like, there's be other right. people. There's other people in the NBA who don't play a lot of games. Like, calm down, bro. He, once he get his one take, he's committed to seeing it through. Anything the Cowboys do wrong, he's taking the biggest victory lap in the world. That's why when we win the Super Bowl, I'm on his head. I'm doing a 20 minute rant on this podcast just for Stephen A. Smith, and I'm tagging him in it. Yeah, being the Niners Week Five, we don't get to that because we definitely <laughs> we, we bounce back. We definitely bounce back. We got Bill Belichick stressing out there. Yeah, he got Mac Jones benched. It was that was an ugly one. Terrible. Let, let, you know, let, let's get into the football because Week Four is wrapped up. Recording this on Tuesday night, so got the whole week behind us. I have it up here about Daniel Jones because I, I think that's where we should start with Monday Night Football because it's the freshest game in our mind. And uh, I'm going to let you go first because I have a lot to say. But in short, this was terrible. The Giants look awful. Actually yeah. – Terrible on every single phase of the football, not just offense, not just defense. Special teams looks bad too. Every single area they look like they've gotten worse from last year. I I will say a couple things. One, I want to say I agree. I want to say they look like one of the worst teams in football. I'm be honest with you. That offensive line is absolutely garbage. Their quarterback. It, honestly, I think he gets a little bit too much hate for what he's like. He, bro, he got sacked eleven times like uh, Monday. They night. set a franchise record, bro. Yeah, like he, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of quarterbacks that can work with that. Granted, he has not looked the best either. Mm-mm. The weapons you you signed a thir- what 31 year old Darren Wilder to be your wide receiver one, and he can't even get the ball. So it's like that experiment didn't work out. Like all the cra- training camps talk about, oh, he looks great. Daniel Jones is throwing in the ball nonstop. I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> None of these other receivers are really stepping up. You know, I like Wando. Wando's kind of hooping a little bit, but he's he coming is. back from ACL. So he's on right. a little bit of a pitch count. Yeah. But offensively, they're nothing. Defensively, they can't stop anyone. They can't get any pressure on the quarterback. Like you said, special teams is terrible. And one thing I would like to say, is that can we stop acting like running backs mean nothing? Because when Saquon Barkley is on the field, this is an entirely different Giants offense. This is a whole different Giants team. Mm-hmm. But yet you decide to pay Daniel Jones $40 million. And you want to treat Saquon like he's just a running back. He means nothing. Mm-hmm. Y'all offense looks absolutely terrible. Saquon is also running behind his offensive line. And he makes it work most of the time because he's just that talented. He makes right. his offense go. We got to stop acting like every running back is just the same. Oh, I can just get Matt Breida to do whatever Saquon does. I could just get whoever. You see what Christian McCaffrey is doing, bro? He is like, there's so many stars on the Niners offense. He is the star on that team. He's making mm-hmm. it go. Plenty of other teams like Derrick Henry made the Titans go for years. Like there's certain players. I don't care what their position is. I don't care that they're at, at a quote unquote a replaceable position. Certain players are just game changers, bro. They make right. your team better and they impact winning. Like Saquon is a like impactful player. So I hope this little shows them like, bro, stop treating him like he's just replaceable, bro. I could not agree more. This team, I, the clip last night of Brian Dable throwing the tablet after watching back the Daniel Jones 100-yard pick six. That was a terrible pick, by the way. That was horrible. Oh, my gosh. I, you, I, as much as I want to give Daniel Jones, like, just get on him for it because he stared it down the whole way, I'm going to take it a different route. Bro, Devin, was it Devin Devon Witherspoon? Yeah. He's like that, bro. He was hoping all game. Who did he – was it – um? Brita, he came in like at, from like the slot corner and popped him. I, I wasn't even I was like, yo, was that a linebacker? And they show it back and I see 21 going crazy. I'm like, that's gotta be that's his corner? corner. What corner hitting like that? Yeah. He was hitting all night, bro. 
And I think Troy Aikman said it. he was like he reminds me of another another twenty one for the the Seahawks talking about Cam Chancellor. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought he was gassing it, but the rest of the game, he's coming downhill with speed, making plays, heavy hits. He's looking for the contact, and then elite reading Daniel Jones' eyes in zone coverage, picks him off, broke his ankles, <laughs> and yeah. took it a hundred yards to the house. Um, so shout out him. He had a huge, huge game on Monday night. But like you said, I, I could not agree more. This team, we talked about it after Saquon's ankle sprain. We said, is this team in trouble without Saquon? We both said yes. I trouble might not even be like they are in dismay. They're, they're getting cooked. they're getting dismantled. They're get I don't even have enough adjectives to describe it, bro. And they're like cooked. I said, every single phase of the game, special teams running into the kicker, like just dumb penalties that are setting this team back. Defensively, some of the worst tackling I've seen in a long time. That Noah Fant almost touchdown, bro, no way. Absolutely yeah, what's no up with way. That? They just can't tackle. Like, what's, what's up with three, that? Bro, three blatant missed tackles. This guy is tiptoeing the sideline. Just put a body on him. He going to step out of bounds. Yeah. Like, it just looks like a team that's so uninspired. There's no spark. Like you said, they brought in Darren Waller. Wandale looks. He has these moments, but you said he's on a pitch count. But, bro, where's Isaiah Hodgins? Where's Jalen Hyatt? Oh, we can't block for Daniel Jones. One, as soon as he touches the ball, bro, the, there's a clip out there from last night where he catches the snap, the left guard, le- the left tackle, the left guard, the center, and the right guard all got beat. Mm-hmm. And under a second, three Seahawks defenders are staring Daniel Jones in the face. What do you want him to do? And then when y'all do block, he's so rattled from all the pressure, he's staring down his receiver and throws a hundred yard pick six. Yeah, that's why. Like, I, it's hard. It's hard to just. Obviously, he made mistakes. Like you said, he made some huge mistakes. But it's hard to be like, yeah, yeah, quarterback. Like, I just paid the wrong guy. Like, it's just all all on Daniel Jones. He just sucks. He sucks. It's like, bro. There's no quarterback in the league can do good on what this is his circumstances with this offensive right. line, bro. It's just it was terrible. And the, like I said, the Giants are just cooked, bro, because they got the Dolphins next and the Bills. They're done. One and five. <laughs> one and five. Easily one and five. They're and they might lose the, to the Commanders after that. Commanders I think they will. Bad. So and Sam Howell looks good. And then you got the Jets with I'm mean, obviously their offense, they have problems, but that defense is still legit. They're they're cooked, bro. I'm sorry. They're absolutely cooked. And Dayball is the reigning coach of the year. Right. Where do you, where do you go from here? Like what what can this what if you're Brian Dayball right now, right? You've been outscored, what was it, 77 to 9 in the first half. Yeah. It's right. They probably took Tuesday off, right? They played on Monday night. It's Wednesday. Team meeting, first thing in the morning. You are the head coach of the Giants. You are Brian Dable. You walk into the meeting. What are you saying to this one in three football team that has gotten just violated, really, on prime time three times this year? Saquon, are you back? Are you healthy? How you feeling? Hey, what's going on? Talk to me, Saquon. How that ankle feeling? <laughs> that's the first thing I'm saying because that's, I mean, you can't make any changes. Because right now, all right, right now, offensively, it's a case of that offensive line is just terrible and these receivers can't separate. Mm-hmm. There's not, you're, it's, what are you going to do, trade? For, like, there's, there's nothing you can do. You're just cooked for the whole season. Like, your offensive line just is what it is. Um, Yeah, you just honestly just hope Saquon comes back so you can at least get some type of run game to kind of take the pressure off. Because we don't have no running game. It's easy for pass rushers to be like, all right, cool. Like, they can't run the ball on us. They're just going to draw a bad thing and throw the ball. We're going to go after them. So we got some, like, some form of running game takes a lot of pressure off. So they need that a lot. At the end of the day, you're going to need to get the Daniel Jones running the ball most of the time. Like he's just going to have to move out of the pocket. He's just going to have to, I need some QB runs. Like you just need something. It can't just be dropped back and throw the ball because not separating and not giving them time to throw is a terrible combination, bro. That's mm-hmm. offense is just not going to go anywhere. But other than that, it's just, they're just cooked. I don't know what to say. They're just cooked. Like, and they were talking about in the broadcast. It's like, it's not like they haven't tried to make the offensive line good. They've just been missing with all of their picks. Like, their guys just have not hit. So, 
Yeah. As a Giants fan, I'm sorry. Your season's over, man. Nah, I'm sorry. And it's coming from a Steelers fan. My season's over, too. <laughs> so, I yeah, just cooked, bro. On the season, Daniel Jones is completing 68% of his passes. It was for 765 yards. He's thrown two touchdowns and six interceptions and been sacked 22 times in four games. You know, my I don't I don't get like I don't get how the Giants receivers aren't separating when they only have little slot guys. It seems like like all the guys that they sign are like short, fast, like speedy guys, which should be good for right. short, quick routes, getting in and out of your break. Like I don't get how they're just. It's not that like they have a bunch of big, soup, big, slow receivers that can't get no separations. Like. They got what Paris Campbell, Wandell, all right, they Isaiah, got a bunch of Isaiah Hodgins, Hodgins, yeah, like, Darius Slayton, like guys Darius that Slayton, can yeah. definitely win in short to intermediate routes. Yeah, That's and a, forgive, find a way to get Darren Waller the ball, bro. It's like if he you you traded for him, he's supposed to, basically supposed to be a number one. Well, but but look in that that Thursday night game against San Francisco, the Daniel Jones was trying. He missed. A lot of throws. They're high. They're outside. They're not on time to Waller. He's trying to make acrobatic catches, but it's like, just put it on him. Yeah. So that it. The offensive line definitely is not helping. But Daniel Jones, is, he's not it, bro. He's not it. Because. As much as we want to harp on this offensive line that is un- performing terribly, which they are, C.J. Stroud is out here breaking rookie records with arguably just as a depleted offensive line from an injury perspective. There's a lot of second stringers and guys playing out of position on that offensive line. He hasn't thrown a pick this whole season. He's got the, they're two and two now, right? The Texans. Yeah, they just bust our ass. So, they, uh, yeah. Oh, it might just cut out. Oh, I don't know why it just did that. Oh, uh, it's back now. Yeah, it muted me on the screen. But I said, you know, how much of an excuse can we really give Daniel Jones? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, at the end of the day, it's just a combination of just bad stuff, man. It's a combination of bad offensive line, bad receivers, and also bad quarterback play. Like, I, I agree with you. I, I think that he's not the answer. I just think that it's not like a Zach Wilson situation where he's all of the problem. 100%. 100%. You know? so, but he definitely is, like, a problem, though. Like, he's definitely not the guy. Because that offense, it just looks so kiddish, too, by the way. Like, it don't look like drop back NFL offense. Everything is like kind of like it literally has training wheels, the it, offense. It like, does. Yeah. It looks like the offense that only allowed him in his best season to throw 15 touchdowns with five picks. Like it just looks so babyish. Like at the and it clearly shows that like you guys are just not say best case scenario. Say the offensive line holds up a little bit. Say Carlton comes back healthy. You guys will just never the way it's constructed never be in the class of even the two teams in your own division and the Eagles and the Cowboys. So it's like oh, arguably all three of them. Yeah. So it's like, why would you even want to settle for mediocrity when you could just you should have never made Daniel Jones? You should have just started from scratch at this point. Because yeah. your ceiling is not high at all. Like I think last last year that was you guys' the ceiling. And that's you see all you saw where that got you. It's a shame. I, I was not expecting this to be what the giant season looked like. Um, I, I don't think I was necessarily expecting it to be this crazy. They're going to be this powerhouse team, but one in three staring down the barrel at one in five, really we might as well pencil them in one in five, bro. Right. You ain't coming back from that. Yeah. That's not even a playoff team. And you got to play the Eagles twice after that too. And the Cowboys one more time. That's three more losses right there. You might pencil one and nine already. You're already going to be below 500. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I, it's shocking, and uh, and they can tag Barkley next year, and it's like, like I said, bro, if I'm him, no, I'm not playing on a tag. I'm good with this. T- I'm straight off in of New York entirely. You've shown me all I needed to see. You paid this man forty million dollars, and we about to be one and five. 
Nah, bro. I'm good. It's just like, bro, I, I, I understand. Like, I, I fully understand why quarterbacks get paid more than other positions. I get why their value is so high. But at the end of the day, bro, we have to just take into account how good are these players, bro. Like, I'm not paying this guy all this money just because he's a quarterback and he's all right. So we might as well keep our all right guy instead of paying our absolutely stud running back. That's making the offense go. I don't get it, bro. I just don't. Uh, yeah. I'd, I don't know what it's going to take to change that. Like, I think we talked about it before. It's going to have to be something in the next CBA, but some got to give, bro, because y'all cannot. I think the running back position has gotten way too undervalued. Like, I do think there is some truth to – some people can be replaceable. We go out and draft somebody like a Pacheco in the seventh round and look what he's doing now in Kansas City. I get that. But like you said, there are some guys like a Derrick Henry, like a CMC, like a Nick Chubb, who when they are on the field are game changers. It's a completely different offense when they are part of the 11 that's on the field. And that cannot be understated. And you can't, it, it literally can't be a better example than what you're seeing right now with the Giants. So these elite running backs need to get paid. And I think people have to realize that every situation is not the same. Like, right. can the Chiefs afford to not have an elite running back? Duh. Right. They can might the have the Gi- most talented quarterback ever. That's <laughs> I what think I'm saying. They'll be all right. Yeah, right, exactly. Can the Eagle, like Eagles last year, like, yeah, f- they have so much talent everywhere else in the best O line of football. You put me back there, we'll probably get three yards a carry. Mm-hmm. But, like, can the Giants? No, like, pay Saquon, bro. It's yeah. different, bro. 100%. Let, let's get into the rest of week four. Um, actually, I, I want to talk Sunday night football first. Um, I did not get a chance to watch all of this game. I went back and, and kind of caught some of it uh, after, it but. It, it was that that was the Jets and Chiefs game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was traveling back from Houston when this game was going on, so I was trying to catch bits and pieces of it while I was driving and, and watch some of it after, but didn't get to catch it live. But this was Zach Wilson's best game, maybe of his career. No, maybe he was hooping, bro. Like I was watching the game. Because going into the game, I'm like, oh, this is about to be a Sunday night blowout. Like, right. Mahomes is about to dial him up, and Zach is about to just – because Chief defense was playing well. And I'm like – I'm just watching the game. I'm like, is that a back shoulder throw? Is that a mm. is that a throw up the seam from Zach Wilson? Like, obviously, he still missed his throws because he's Zach Wilson. Like, he missed Garrett on the – I think it was – was it a wheel route? It was something. He missed Garrett up right – easy touchdown, like layup mm-hmm. touchdown. Then he missed – um. It was Conklin. He missed someone else on another touchdown. But yeah. at the end of the day, like he's Zach Wilson. He's gonna make some he's gonna make some terrible throws, but he, he played well. I'm not gonna lie. He definitely played well. Um and I mean he kind of ended it with fumbling the snap that kind of ruined the game. But at the end of the day, bro, if they could get this Zach Wilson, I they're not gonna be all right. Like they're not gonna win anything, they're not gonna make it far in the playoffs. But they'll at least be in games. Like they that they, he at least gives them a chance if he plays yeah. like this. I don't know if he will. He might next week because he got the Broncos and they absolutely suck. So he actually might look like Patrick Mahomes next week. Mm-hmm. But if he could play serviceable, then I see the case of just all right, just letting it rock. Let let him play a little bit. This is what I'm gonna say. I think I sold my Zach Wilson stock too early. <laughs> because one of my biggest reasons for saying I think they should let him get a shot at starting and ride it out a little bit before they entertain a backup or going out and trying to sign somebody is Aaron Rodgers being in his ear and helping to coach him up. This is the first game Aaron Rodgers was back on the sideline at the crutches, and what happened? That is true. I, I do think there is something there, something that he's telling him. That might just be his presence, maybe – I want to sound too Gen Z, but hey, maybe it's just his aura. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever it is, I don't. Maybe he's giving him, you know, that that good good stuff under the table. Those psychedelics he be taking. I don't. Whatever he's doing, it's working. And I, I, this version of Zach Wilson is what I was expecting. It's not great, 
but it is much improved from what we saw last year. And that's what he looked like in the preseason when Aaron Rodgers was in his ear calling plays, telling him who to go to, helping him break the game down even easier. And if this is the Zach Wilson we're seeing, I, I think you're underselling it. I think this team, this defense is good enough to go ahead and mess around and make a playoff game and make some noise. If, if that Zach Wilson is what we're seeing, a Zach Wilson that's going, what was his final stat line? He went 28 for 39, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and a 105 quarterback rating. If he don't fumble that snap, they, they beat the Chiefs on Sunday night football. Hey, man. I don't know. It's... it's- <clears throat> it's tough. What I will say is, I will say that I, okay, so like, I know Zach Wilson sucks, but at the end of the day, he played, he came in against the Bills, who we clearly see their defense is top notch. Yep. After that was the Patriots or the Cowboys, which was, at the, I think Cowboys hey. was next. Yeah, Cowboys was Regardless. second, then the Patriots. Regardless, yeah, Cowboys. Elite defenses. It, they, that's my point exactly so it's like yeah like obviously he's gonna struggle against those teams so i'll say that i'll, I'll give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt that say that this zach wilson best case scenario is somewhere in between this one and the one we've seen against those other teams at least somewhere in the middle which could be serviceable you know what i mean could be enough to just okay we don't need to bring in a carson Wentz. we don't need to bring in a whoever this guy can at least hold down the floor a little bit and, like, keep us somewhat of a float. So I, I give him credit. He definitely played well, 100%. Uh, I, I'm excited to see him next week. I Like I said, I, I think I should have just I should just stuck to my guns and, and held on to that Zach Wilson stock one more week. Because I, I do think Aaron Rodgers being there really – it's making a difference. It is making a difference for him – and now, like you said, they're going to Denver to play a team that bro, Justin Fields, they should have won that game. I can't believe they lost that game. But bro, honestly, bro, I just like bro, time out. I just want to really give my condolences to Bear fans, bro. Like, there cannot be a worse franchise to root for. Like, it's crazy. They, it, it just it literally cannot be a worse franchise in, in sports right now because well, I don't know, bro. They they did make a more recent Super Bowl than the Cowboys. Did they really? 2000. I'll never ever forget. They played this. They played the Saints in the Super Bowl, right? Or no, they couldn't. I mean, that's NFC and NFC. They played the Colts. Put the Colts in the Super Bowl. Devin had. I vividly remember. Oh, okay, that was the Hester watching one. Devin okay, Hester okay, okay. return to kickoff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, honestly though, I I'd still rather. Be, I, I mean, obviously, I'd rather be a Cowboys fan. This is uh, definitely yeah. more regular season success and just general better team. But they did. But they like, did get there. Well, they didn't. They haven't won a game since like a year ago. <laughs> like, Literally, it's been like three sixty five, bro. <laughs> like, bro, it, it cannot be a worse franchise to root for. At least right now in this moment, it's like, bro, y'all look so good. Justin Fields is dying. His, they, I believe this was his first three hundred yard game passing game. Is it Four really? touchdown. Yeah. No way. Did. That's his first three hundred yard pass. Yeah, because it was a stat out there that says CJ Stroud. It was like in like week two. That was like CJ Stroud has thrown for more three hundred yard games than Justin Fields has in the entire career, and which is still true because CJ Stroud has like at least two. CJ Stroud is already, I think, the best NFL quarterback from Ohio State ever. Easily, right now, it's just <laughs> the I'm bar not, is not high. All time, <laughs> I think I'm stamping CJ Stroud is representing Ohio State. He's the only one that's come in and had immediate success. Terrell Pryor came in and they made that man a wide receiver. And he was honestly very serviceable for a couple seasons there. He was, but he uh he made um yeah, he he's eliminating that narrative. But the long story short, Justin Fields looked like Pat Mahomes against the Broncos. So it's like Zach Wilson. I, I'm at least very, very intrigued about how this game is going to oh, turn out. Yeah. I'm going to be watching this one closely because if he's out here really dotting up, like, oh man, I don't know if that's more on him or more about how just how bad the Broncos are, man. Like, yeah, they're, I they're am. Terrible. I'm very, very interested to see this one because their rush defense also has not been anything spectacular either. 
So maybe this is an opportunity for Brees to get a, a nice little bounce back game. Obviously, we already know what Moster and A-Chan did to them in <laughs> week three. So they're they're probably still running in Denver. I, I don't know what's going on over there. So and uh, you know, the uh the Bears had a good day. Khalil Herbert had a big game on the ground against them as well. So I, I I'm excited for this Jets game. Man, let's uh, get this momentum rolling into to week five, get himself a little cupcake matchup, go out, get a convincing win, toss a couple touchdowns, have a good game, and then they go and play the Eagles. And go and shock the world, bro, because that Eagles team, bro, they have not been playing up to par, and they keep squeaking out of these games that they, man, y'all, man. Your mic is muted. Your mic is muted. I'm faded. The, <laughs> Eagles, the Eagles is going to get a bad loss in here in one of these games. They're, they, they're gonna they, they playing like they should have one. They should have lost that Patriots game. They well, should have lost. They could have. They could have lost. Mo- they could have lost the Washington game. You let. They should have lost that too. Like, <sighs> I'm gonna say I'm how a guy. You let Sam how dot you up on the final drive and with a second left, give up a last second touchdown. That last. Bro. That was a beautiful pass, by the way. Oh, it was an absolute dot. That's what I said. Sam how. Listen, we both in the same book. Sam how is that guy, bro? Mm-hmm. He listen. He's doing his thing, but still, at the end of the day, bro, this Eagles team has not looked. I picked him to win the Super Bowl this year. I, I, they don't look like that great. No. Like, granted, they're winning a lot of these games off of just sheer talent and a little bit of luck. But other than that, like, they're squeaking these games out. But it has not looked pretty. Like, no. I, I don't think they have one good win, like they don't. solid win. And it's no disrespect because at the end of the day, like, I'm always the type of guy that will sit here and say, "Bro, a win is a win, no matter how you get it." And there's a reason why teams stack wins. Like, sometimes they're ugly. At the end of the day, good teams find a way to just win the game. And the Eagles are doing that. When the money was on the line in the Patriots game, they got the sock that they needed. When the money was on the line in the Vikings game, they did the same thing. Buccaneers, they were able to handle, you know, pretty decently. And then, again, this Commanders game – they end up, you know, blowing it up right at the end, have it go into overtime. They get the stop that they need. They go down. Jake Elliott kicks, in, kicks another 50-yard game-winning field goal. He has like eight of those in the last two seasons or something crazy like that. Um, so th- this team, when the money is on the line, they've gotten it done. Full respect to them. They have not played up to the level of a reigning NFC champion. And – I, look, I, I'm not saying they need to be concerned because they've got the Rams next and they got the Jets, both obviously very winnable games for a team of this caliber. And they have the Dolphins after that. Like, there's a real chance this team goes 6 and 0 against the Dolphins. Maybe they could start out 7 and 0 until they run to the Commanders. That could be 8 and 0. And they got to see Dallas. I, one of these games. All of the, like you said, the the sloppy play, the bad, you know, drives, their bad third down play calls, just inconsistent offense is going to catch up to them. And they're not going to be able to get that last second play that they need to, you know, close it out. And I think it's coming. And I don't think that means that they necessarily are pl- this bad of a team. I think they just need something like that to be a shock to their system. Yeah, absolutely. They, they could have a super bad loss and then wake up, and then everything right. switches. What I will say is, I'll um, I'll uh, right now I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because they have two new coordinators on both sides of the that ball. Too. So yeah. like you could just say it's growing pains a little bit. Um, and like you said, they could literally come out of a, what, either a bad loss or like. Maybe they have a bye week. Like they could just have something in the middle in the middle of the season that could just make them flip that switch and it look like the equals of last year. Because all the talent's still there. Like arguably got better. Like defense, these young guys are playing insane. Jalen Carter looks like an absolute freaking stud. I, another thing the Bears messed up on by just handing it to them, bro. It's, like, it's just unbelievable. Insane. This franchise, bro. Fran- poverty franchise. The definition of poverty franchise right now. But um. But, yeah, the Eagles definitely need, like, a bad loss or something just to wake them up just so they can stop playing so poorly. Like, they just – I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. The only bright spot right now is Swift looks like 
You know what I'm saying? Looks like that guy we thought he was. You know, yeah. us fellow Swifties stand up. Hey, I now, as of today, after I made that trade in the Dynasty League, I have Swift in every single fantasy league I am in this year. I give do not me, blame you. Give me all the Swift stock. I do not blame you. He looks great. Um, I mean, A.J. Brown's out here hooping. That's what he does. But other than that, these Eagles just need to pick it up a little bit. Definitely, definitely do. And I, I don't mean to get disrespectful, but but speaking of a team that needs to pick it up, we always got to get into our, our our fandoms here. Bro, talk to me about the Steelers game. Because like I said, I, I this was a game I didn't really get to watch much of, at all, really at all live. Caught up a little bit on afterwards. But 30-6 to six against the Texans, bro? Whoa, whoa, the Texans are a good team, man. No, no, nah, I, nah, I ain't no disrespect to them. Like I said, C.J. Stroud is hooping with not a great old line. You know, Nico Collins is going crazy. Tank Dell, this was a very quiet game for him, but the past two games he's looked great. Shout out this this Texans team, but 30 to 6? 30 man. to 6, bro? Listen, I'm a – where do I even start? This is what I'll say, Okay. We're not good. <laughs> like it's just, it's, we're just not good. I don't know what else to say. We're just not a good football team. It's just it is what it is. Can he pick it? It looks like trash. Um, Matt Canada. I, I mean, obviously a lot of Steelers fans and people fans in general just can see how bad Matt Canada is, man. And the fact that matter of fact, this is what I'll this is what I'll say to, on a serious note. We need to do better at adapting and making change and stop being like the same old Steelers. Like it's it's all right, it's cute, it's fun. Like Mike Tomlin has his little Tom Tomlinisms and he says his nice little quotes and we play tough nose football. Like that's fine, bro. At the end of the day, it is 2023. Offensive coaches are are running laps around these defensive coaches now. Like the game has changed. Like it's not just all oh, we get a running back, a bell cow. We run the ball. We play hard defense. No, that's not what the NFL is anymore. We need an actual OC with a freaking brain that knows how to call plays and dial up creative things. Like you actually need to change. Like the Steelers right now are like, like that, like, like a like an old dad or something that just don't know how to adapt to nothing. Like just don't know how to make no changes. Like. Don't know how to work, get the new iPhone. They don't know how to make no type of change. <laughs> and it pisses me off. So I'm watching, I'm watching plays, but I literally, this is a fun little game I play with myself just to piss me off. I watch the game and I'm like, this is going to be a run, run play. This is going to be a pass, pass play. And then if you want to make it worse, I could be like, this is going to be a jet sweep to Austin. Boom, jet sweep. This yeah. is going to be inside zone to Najee. Boom. Like it's so obvious. And if I can call it out sitting here on my couch, I guarantee you the other team knows exactly what's coming. So, at the end of the day, offense is putrid. Um, Kenny Pickett kind of sucks a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But at the end of the day, it's the second Damn. year, and the offense is not helping. Like, the, the play call is not helping. No. And our I don't know what it is about corners and the Steelers. We can't figure that out to save our life. Like, I knew we was tough when we signed Patrick Peterson because I'm like, bro, he is like 56 years old. <laughs> He's out here getting crowded and cooked. Like, it's just bad, bro. It's just bad. Like, man, we need to not waste TJ Watt square. That's what I'm going to say. We can't no. be like what the Texans were to JJ Watt. <laughs> With, with TJ Watt, we can't right. do that, bro. I'm sorry. Our, our, he's too good. We got too much talent in like spots on our team to just not put it all together, man. But yeah, at the end of the day, we we just something got to change. Matt Cannon needs to get fired, and we need to see if Kenny Pickett is the guy. Because if he's not the guy, we need to move off. We 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 do. We got to make something shake. If I gave you the phone right now and on the other line was Mike Tomlin and you had 60 seconds to talk to Mike Tomlin, what would you tell him right now? All right, all right, bro, boom. Matt Canada, out of there, fired now. He needs to get he needs to be fired yesterday. We need to get someone in here who's creative and can like actually call good plays and you know, use use our talented players to their strengths because at the end of the day, we got talent, man. We got George Pickens is nice. I understand Deontay is hurt. We got a nice little tight end. I know he's hurt right now. Um, Give Jalen Warren the keys, too, because Najee is slower than I don't know what. But it's a Tony Pollard-Zeke situation. Najee is the goal back. 
Unfortunately, we don't get to the goal line very much, so that means to give Jalen Warren the keys. And then defensively, bro, tighten up, bro. We can't – Our, I'm tired of watching our secondary get absolutely embarrassed, bro. Last year, I watched Gabe Davis one-hand snag a, a touchdown out of Micah, Fitz, Micah Fitzpatrick's hands. I watched A.J. Brown literally moss two of our defenders and point you, you, and just shook his head. I was like, bro, damn, that's bad. Help my fantasy that week. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but as a Steelers fan, though, I was like, bro, that's just tough. And I watched uh, Ayuk break Patrick Peterson's ankles mm-hmm. on the ground and then moss him. We got to do something with the secondary, bro. We just do. I can't watch them just get embarrassed like this. It's just, it's just bad. It's so bad. And then, like, I get it. It's the, t- the Texans look good, but, bro, it's the Texans. We can't get 30 feet by the Texans, bro. I'm yeah. sorry. We That's can't crazy. Get 30 feet by the Texans is nuts, bro. Unless CJ Stroud is a top five QB next year, then that can make me look back at this and be like, all right, hey, I just like that. According to RG3, he's a top five. Or he's a top 10 QB right now today. I mean, he's definitely top 15. He said top 10. I think he might actually said top five. Let me let me double five is, check. Ten and, 10 and five is gassing, but he's top 15. I, I thought the same thing. He ha- Look, he's looked phenomenal. I, I'm not going to, you know, discredit him in any way. I put it this but, way. <clears throat> Obviously, Mahomes, Allen, Burrow. Well, I don't know Burrow right now. I don't know. But definitely I, not right now. No, nah, I mean, Burrow, we'll put Burrow there. Herbert, uh, Hertz, Dak. This is not order, by the way. Lamar, I say Kirk Cousins is still better. His situation is just terrible. I agree. Uh, I'm missing someone. I know I'm missing someone. I only got eight. Tua looks good. Mm, who am I missing? Hey, hey, from a pure talent perspective. Argument, maybe I don't know. You're talking about pure talent, yeah. I, I like CJ Stroud, I really do. But I just you got to give to us some sort of credit, like he's just putting up crazy numbers. Yeah, that's only nine. Who who else? Oh, Trevor Lawrence. Did you say Dak? I said Dak, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Trevor Lawrence is 10. Um, man, after that, Matthew no. Stafford. Oh, I say eleven. Yeah, give him some credit. I'm not counting Aaron Rodgers. I'm looking he, at a list of teams right now. He ain't throwing a pick yet. Jared, Jared Goff. Goff? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It's more like a. Eh? I don't know. I give. I mean, I lean Jared Goff, but can you imagine CJ Stroud behind that old line with them weapons? Behind that stout old line, it's like. He's top 15, for sure. There's no uh, yeah. doubt in my mind. He's top 15. It he, has a case to be top 12. Right at four games, that's a decent sample size. He's the best rookie quarterback right now. I, to me, not a question. Oh, no, not, even a, not even a debate. He's the be- he's definitely – I say it, AR is playing very well, though. Like, he's just playing well. But as far as, like, talent and everything, C.J. Stroud is for sure the best one right now. Hey, not the, even close. the super analytical people, they put out a graph that had – Expected completion percentage per I, – I don't know if it was per – it might be per game or per throw, something like that. Um, and then your expected uh, EPA per play. Basically, the gist of it was Anthony Richardson, from those analytical stats that people like to throw out when they're trying to really take deep dives on ranking quarterbacks – He's like far and away the worst quarterback in the NFL this year, which is crazy. He, <laughs> nice. he does. He definitely has his moments where like the, you see the flashes, you see the athleticism. I think Shane Steichen has done a phenomenal job at like he did with Hertz playing to his strengths, letting him use his athleticism, getting him outside of the pocket, using him as a runner. Hello, Chicago. Are you listening? Like, Literally. like, Dev just playing to your quarterback strength and it, it puts the team in, in the best position. I've seen people be critical and be like, bro, the only two games they won are the two games that Gardner Minshew played in. Uh, blah, 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 whatever. At the end of the day, even if Anthony Richardson doesn't look the best as a passer right now, the athleticism is going to do a lot. That you can continue to work on. He continue to get more reps at NFL game speed. 
to get more comfortable at being a passer in Shane Steichen's system. Um, and I'm not, like I said, I'm never going to be one to super rush or put any pressure on a rookie, especially one like, like you're saying, has had his moments where he's played really well, put his team in positions to win games. Almost yeah. like he was going toe to toe with this Jaguars team, which granted, CJ Stroud kind of put him down a little easily. <laughs> low key, yeah. CJ Stroud is that guy. Which that's the gist of everything. Yeah, CJ Stroud is that guy. But AR for sure, he shows his flashes. I th- to me, he just has like a accuracy problem sometimes and a touch problem. There's a lot of throws right. where it's like he needs to take way more heat off that ball. And those are things that we knew coming in. Right, he was not, not the surprised. most. He's not the best passer in college. Yeah, he leaped up the board because of the athleticism and the raw, the vertical. Of- I might keep doing it. I might just cut out again. Yeah, a little bit, but it's cool. I don't know. It's bugging. When is the cord again? I'm definitely about to just get a new one for it. Uh, but yeah, just of it. CJ Stroud is him. Um, I'm definitely turning that Mike Tomlin thing into a TikTok. So be prepared for that. That's fine with me, man. Um. Since you talk about the Steelers, I'll go ahead before we get into our rapid recap of the week. Definitely going to have to talk about my Cowboys because I got on them last week after they lost to the Cardinals in very, very disappointing fashion. They came out, looked like they took that. Like we said with the Eagles, you got to have a loss to kind of give you that shock to the system. Granted, it was against the Patriots, which has a case to be the one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Um, but defense played lights out. Scoop and score, pick six, Leighton Vander Esch, Deron Bland, get more comfortable playing on the outside after typically being the nickel back next to Diggs and Stephon Gilmore. He gets himself a pick six. What I will say Obviously, the O-line getting healthier. They got Tyler Smith back. They got Tyler Biotish back. That helps a ton. The red zone offense is still a concern because we're still – we get all – we get down the field so easy. Bro, 10 yards and in is like a struggle, such a struggle. And I'm getting frustrated at the play calls at this point. Mr. Mike McCarthy, Mr. I want to control the game. I want to run the ball. It's first and goal from the four, pass play. Second and goal from the four, pass play. Can we can we just hand the ball off? Let like if you get stuffed on first and goal from the four, okay. It happens. But like, can can we try? Can we make the attempt. We have Tyler Smith back. We have Biotish back. Martin is in there and healthy. The interior of that offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. Just hand the ball off. Worst come to worst, you at least are getting back to the line of scrimmage, bro. And then you, you're going to have to throw – what you're doing on first and goal, you're going to have to do on second and goal anyway. If you're throwing on first and goal and it's incomplete, you're still going to throw second and goal from the four. 100%. I, I, the play calling has frustrated me. I think the – even in the, the, the Cardinals game, like I said, it was just like – Okay, CD, you have a fade. Okay, you have a fade. And then it was like, yeah, we're going to run this little dig over the middle and smack it right in the, little, the middle linebacker's face mask. Like, it's not been creative. It's not been enough for me to really be excited about this red zone offense. I wish Brandon Cooks could get more involved out in, in general. Forget the red zone. Like, just as a whole, I felt like he needs to get more involved in this offense. Um, so... I'm not fully sold yet. Like I said, the defense did what they needed to do because this Patriots offense is not good. It made them look that way. Great. Still have my same concerns with this red zone offense and with this short yardage running game. The same one that I had coming into the season, they are not doing anything that is making me feel any better about it, which at this point in time, and where so much talk is about, oh my gosh, the Eagles are unstoppable on Anything from like one and a half yards or less, third and one, fourth and one, fourth and goal from the one, you know what's coming. You can't stop it. I wish we had something like that. <laughs> I wish I wish we could be dominant in short yardage situations. We don't miss, need to attempt it. Miss Zeke a little bit, man. I miss Zeke a lot. 
Miss Ms. Zeke a lot. Miss Zeke and Miss Schultz. Those are literally two red zone guys. Hey, shout out to Ferguson. He he's you know coming online a little bit. Seven catches, 77 yards. Didn't drop any of his targets, completed everything that was thrown his way. So I'm hoping that he can, you know, come on and kind of fill that Dolan Schultz role. Um, but yeah, all in all, my biggest takeaway from this game, defense definitely, I think. Took what happened last week personally as they should have because there was no reason to lose that game. They went out and they took it to a inferior team. It's red zone offense has to be better. I know that the, that's what McCarthy is preaching, but it has to be better. And until it actually happens in the game, until y'all get to the red zone four times and score four touchdowns, I'm going to keep saying the same thing, bro, because – and if you want to get to these heights that every team is aspiring to, but especially a team like the Cowboys that put together a Super Bowl caliber roster, if you're in the NFC Championship game, you can't go to the red zone five times and, and kick two field goals. Yeah. You have to get six. Three is not going to cut it. If you're in a Super Bowl and it's fourth and goal from the two, I need a, I need the team to fear a run. 100%. You're not wrong at all. Right. Because if if they're not scared of what you're about to do up front, if they don't think that you're big enough to just buckle up the chin strap and say, we're going to play old school football and just mono e mono, let's see what happens at the line of scrimmage, then it's a little bit easier to defend whatever else you got going out there, especially when you're just throwing fade balls. Literally. So, <clears throat> I, I need to see a lot, a lot more from this red zone offense. And I don't, to me, it's not even a DAP thing. It's a play calling thing. I need to see better. 100%. And specifically when we're talking about running the ball, that's with Tony Pollard, correct? I may or may not have him on my fantasy team. So <laughs> let's put Mike McCarthy. If you're watching this, he's talking about specifically and only exclusively to Tony Pollard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Rico but, uh, Dowdle, like, chill on that. Chill on Rico. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we need Tony Pollard. Deuce Vaughn, that'd be cool to see. I'm not going to lie. He might hide. He might duck under, you know what I'm saying? Duck under the defense. <laughs> now, on a serious note, yeah, that's that's the main concern is the red zone. Cause y'all, like I said, you move the ball fine bro, up and down the field. We can get to the five yard. If bro, if the five yard line was the end zone. Oh my gosh, we'd have scored so many times this year. Yeah, bro. Like that last up and down, no that last five is whooping their ass, bro. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, that, that's the sad part about it. But um, like I said, my takeaway from the game is because I don't when I watch the Niners and the Cowboys and the Eagles play, I don't even care about who they're playing i compare them all to each other because those right. are all the top teams in the league so like watching it yeah they just won by 30 they won 38 to 3 i fully get that but i don't know man it's just I, i'm i'm so glad you guys are playing the niners next week because no I, i'll be the first one to say it the niners have played better they look better than the cowboys the niners in, in the last like two the best, weeks the niners look like the best team in football period yeah. The nine. If I were being completely honest, the Niners have been the best football team in the league ever since Chris McCaffrey has gotten there. Yeah, and, like they haven't lost. Like obviously they lost in one game when Brock Purdy literally could not throw the ball. Elbow not, broke. Yeah, if we're not counting that, like these guys is undefeated with Brock right. Purdy, bro. Like they look good. So I'm I'm curious to see when they're gonna get challenged, man, because. I, I, mean, I sure hope it's this week because I, I, bro, if I go back to that video that we posted, it had like a hundred bookmarks. I know it's 49ers, 49ers fans are waiting. They bro, are waiting. I'm not going to lie. That one could end pretty badly if you guys lose that game because they was in them comments. They was saving, they was saving all the videos. But man, I, I like I said, I want to see this team get challenged, bro, because they're just rolling everybody. Like you guys are rolling people too, but obviously you had your little mishap against um against the Cardinals. But bro, even going back to last year, bro, they're just being teams, being teams, being teams. So I I, I want to see this challenge, bro. I want to see them go against you guys, and thankfully they also play the Eagles um December third as well. I I want to see that. I want to see them games because I really want to know like going into the playoffs who is the team to beat because right now it's three of them but i want to know who the team to beat is right now yeah so I, i'm bro, i'm super super excited for this sunday night game i think jerry jones came out today and basically said the same thing that i just said the 49ers have looked like the best team in football there's no there's no bias that i can put behind it it's just it's plain to see 
Their defense looks as incredible as advertised. It looks arguably better than last season. CMC, I think, looks arguably better than last season to clearing away the best running back in the NFL. It's, it's, it's not even a conversation to be had, no. really, bro. Nobody's doing what he's doing on the ground, and he's probably the best receiving back in the NFL, too. He like, is the best receiving back. He's it, just the best, bro. It is just not a conversation. Brock Purdy is not turning the football over. He doesn't hit all of his throws, but – Bro, he doesn't have to do much. Ayuk looks great. When they get Debo going, he looks explosive. George Kittle be doing George Kittle things in the run game. When he gets the ball, he does George Kittle things with the ball in his hands. Like, top to bottom, this team looks phenomenal. This is going to be a real test. I think Jerry Jones' exact quote was, this is going to be a measuring stick for Dallas. How, how do we actually look against a team that we know – is really that good. We came out against the Giants and we 40 pieced them. We just spent the first 25 minutes of this episode talking about the Giants being cooked. Whatever. We went out against the Zach Wilson team and beat them handily. We spent another good chunk of time talking about, especially on last episode, talking about Zach Wilson potentially needing to not be the guy in New York anymore. And then you lose to the Cardinals and you go out and win 38-3 to against a, a team with Mac Jones who ends up getting benched for Bailey Zappi later in the game. And uh, people are starting to call for his head because they're not impressed with what they've seen from him. So this is the first, I think, real test for this team. Y'all put together, like I said, a Super Bowl roster. This team prevented you from going to the NFC Championship multiple seasons now. They eliminated you from the playoff playoffs in back-to-back seasons in embarrassing fashion out here with the the slide and running out of time and in the following year Zeke gets speared on the last play of the game there needs to be a chip on this team's shoulder they need to come out energized I need to see Dak play a confident game of football if we lose the game and Dak plays with conviction I'm okay. I'll still be upset because, again, like I said, I definitely was ready for this. After that Giants game, I was I was ready for week five. And I, I'm still excited for the game. But I, I really need to see something from Dak. I need to see something from his offense. I think the defense is going to make it tough for Brock like they did last year. But it's hard if your offense ain't putting up any points. So I need to see improvement from his offense. And if they can get it done against this 49ers team, that will tell me a lot about what this Cowboys team can accomplish this year. Man, I'm kind of pissed, bro. We got to wait till Sunday to see all this, man. They got some games I want to see on Sunday, man. Mm -hmm. We talked about Zach Wilson versus the Broncos. We talked about this game. Like, it's just just some good games I'm going to want to see, man. That that Sunday night is going to be, oh, that's going to be so good to see. So Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Excited. Definitely excited. You got Raven Steelers. That's always a oh gritty, gritty matchup. I don't even care about the Steelers no more, bro. We suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're so bad, bro. Honestly, tank for Caleb. <laughs> tank for Caleb. <laughs> tank for Caleb, bro. Any team that's not about to win. The- Honestly, bro, at this point, bro, any team that's not about to make some noise in the playoffs, bro, just tank for Caleb. That's really what it is. <laughs> for real, though. Like, bro, tank for Caleb, bro, and just get a new OC, and we're just, bro, you will never – the, it's crazy that I talk about the Lakers. That's how it would be with my Steelers again. Because yeah. when we're good, I bro, you can't tell me nothing. Like when it was the triple Bs, bro, you couldn't tell me nothing, bro. Oh my god, we was the best offense in the league. We was just the best. The fact that we never won with them haunts me to this day. It's crazy. I hate Tom Brady. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who if you're if you're not a Patriots fan, who doesn't hate Tom Brady? Yeah, and I'm not a lie. That is out of pure respect. Like that is the most respect you can give Tom Brady. Because boy, I can't stand him. That's what I'm saying. It's all like it's a, it's fully out of respect. Nothing but respect. Absolutely hate that guy to my de- depths of my core. Right. So it's like, and I hate people who are not Patriots fans who like Brady. Because why do you like Brady? You should hate him just like everyone else. I know he violated your team. Stop lying. That's what I'm saying. I, I like stop it, bro. But when I think about it too, I kind of get it because that's kind of how I feel with Mahomes. Because like I'm not a Chiefs fan, but I like Mahomes a lot. Yeah. So then I'm starting to notice people really hate Mahomes, like how they did Brady. Yeah. Like, like like people was trying to say that Chiefs game is rigged because of the Taylor Swift stuff and 
Hold on now. They didn't call the hold on that uh, that left tackle. On the run, yeah. Right? That was a little skeptical. I think the refs got together and they were saying that it was like, because he it looked like he kind of gave up on the play. Like he didn't keep trying to rush past the hold. I don't know, man. That looked pretty bland to me. That the holding call on Sauce Gardner is crazy. It's, it was, but I mean, bro, I, I'm I'm not gonna say it's the refs because I'll never ever be the guy to be like the game comes down to one flag or two flags. There's so many other plays that could have happened. Like we said, if Zach Wilson doesn't fumble that snap, y'all probably win the game anyway. Like it, it's so many other things right. that go into that. So I'm not gonna put it on that. I, I'm just saying. It's a little, little sus. A little sus. At the end of the day, bro, it's missed calls all across the field. You can find yeah, I can go it back is. and look at it, uh, look at all 22 and find a missed call on probably every single play there is. Find a hole on every single play. Like, bro, they had a safety that wasn't even supposed to be a safety. And, um, that, that is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much stuff right. that goes on. It's like, to say that they was just straight cheating right. is, I don't believe that. But, yeah, it, it, it's it, definitely it not fishy, why though. they lost the game. It, like I said, it's sus. It's a little... How does that not get called, or why did that get called? But yeah. it did not lose them the game. Yeah, it, it just looks fishy because I don't know if you've seen like how like the NFL and their bio has like Chiefs yeah, yeah. two and zero with Taylor. So, like it looks fishy because it looks like they're rooting for them. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie, they got to tone down on that. I get right. it's a superstar, but they gotta. They it's starting to get a little out of hand. Though, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, it's, it is what it is, man. They get that Brady effect, but they get the fifty fifty calls. They are gonna go that way. I said mm-hmm. that. Listen, if you pissed off, that's how I felt watching Brady all these years. I'm like, bro, come on. Like, was it the right call? I guess. But, like, damn. Like, why they always get the right call at the right time? Yeah. Why that always happen? So, that's what it is, man. Yeah. Speaking of Taylor Swift, if you want to be like her and travel to all these different NFL stadiums and get great tickets to NFL games, you got to go to SeatGeek, man, and use our code off the glass, all one word, for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. We're deep into the NFL season. Week five is coming up. I know some of y'all are going to these games. And like I said, the NBA season is right around the corner. I think playoff baseball is, I think it started tonight. So everything is in full effect. And I know y'all are trying to go to these sporting events, especially if you're out here in the South. The heat wave has finally, I think, cooled off for the year. Multiple months of it being in the triple digits. I think we are in the clear now. So it's safe to go outside. Go ahead, get you to a ballpark or a football stadium or an arena, whatever event you're going to. Seat Geek has you covered for the best deals at the best prices. And you're going to get an even better price when you use code, again, off the glass all one word for $20 off your first Seat Geek order. With that, we're going to get into our rapid recap of week four of the NFL. That is where we speed through every game that we did not cover in depth. And I have a little added, a little added fun for today. Because I think we mentioned on last pod that it definitely sounded like the Chris Berman music for NFL Prime Time. So let me get this queued up. Oh, my God. oh no! Oh, it's back! It's back! It's back! It's back! You it's good, back? Good, we good? We good? We good? We good? Business? Okay, okay. First game, we got Lions, Packers. Lions win this one 34 to 20, really dominate the game. What do you think about this one for Jared Goff and the Lions, who are now three and one on the season? I was gonna say, um, it is not the Lions division to lose. I was gonna say the Packers have a chance, but right now it's looking like the Lions division to lose. Uh, they just look good, man. I'm not gonna lie, they look good on both sides of the ball. They look fantastic. First game on Sunday over there across the pond in England. Jaguars 23, Falcons 7, Trevor Lawrence throws for 207 and a touchdown. Ritter is not the guy. Arthur Smith, I understand this is more like a fantasy take. I really do. But, like, genuinely from a real football standpoint, what is the point of drafting Kyle Pitts that high if you're going to use John o. Smith? Tripled his yardage. Like, 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 this is like real-life football. Does it even make sense to draft a guy that high, the highest draft tight end ever, and not use him? That just doesn't, to me, just doesn't make sense. But whatever. It's cool. Do what y'all gonna do. Crazy. 
AFC East division game in Buffalo. The Dolphins get boat raced. Josh Allen has a perfect quarterback rating. Throws for four touchdowns. Rushes for another five touchdown day for Josh Allen. They put up 48 on the Dolphins. Yeah, everybody was overreacting just, just a little, just a little I think, bit. I think reaction. maybe us included. <laughs> just, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the Bills are they're, they're a top team in the AFC. We definitely overreacted a little bit. Um, Got to realize, bro, Jets are just his kryptonite sometimes. But Bills look great. Dolphins, I'm honestly not even too worried. Their defense has just got, like, Swiss cheese. But you're going to get Ramsey back. Hopefully you're going to get a little bit healthier, have a little bit more experience. But I'm not too, too worried. But right now the Bills look like one of the best teams in the AFC. Definitely. Ravens 28, Browns 3. Deshaun Watson is not out. DTR did not look great. Lamar has four total touchdowns. People need to put some respect on Lamar as a passer, bro. Please. He's an elite passer. Uh, yeah, not, no, elite runner, not elite. He's an elite thrower of the football, bro. He can throw the, book, the, the ball, bro. He's not this whole just running quarterback that people like to say. Thank you. I can't even. I, every time I look at the score, it looks fake. Titans 27, Bengals <laughs> 3. 3 points. Jamar Chase says he's always open. He's always effing open. So what do you have to say about that? Joe Burrow should have been. He should have just been on IR to start the season. He should have not played, bro. Because at the end of the day, what are you guys, one and three? It would have been the same record probably either one, way. It would have been one and three regardless. So it's like, nah, he's not going to get any healthier. Bank was just kind of, just low-key, kind of ruined their season. T. Higgins hurt. The offense not looking great. Don't see it picking up anytime soon. Might have just ruined your season. Cannot believe that Ryan Tannehill is winning that game that handily. It's unbelievable. Um, in overtime, Puka Nakua finally, after so many catches to start his career, gets himself a touchdown, and the Rams eke one out over the Colts, 29-23. to Um, It's hard to make a take about this that's not a fantasy take. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it can be, because you know I got Puka in two leagues. I got Kyron. Kyron. I have Ky- yeah, I know how to realize I have Kyron in every single league I'm in. Kyron been going one. crazy. He's the best. I love that guy. He's the freaking best. But now nah, Rams continue to be better than what everyone thought. Anthony Richardson actually showed flashes, but he showed us also why he's a rookie. So right. not, not too much to take away from the game, really. Yeah. Hey, shout out Puka, man. Keep doing your thing because I need it. Man. I need it week in, week out. Him and Cup? Dynamic duo when, they come, when he come back? 100%. The volume is going to be crazy. Why? Like I wouldn't even cover anybody else on the field. No. I'm going to make Stafford throw to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> NFC South matchup. The Saints can't put up double digits. They lose 26-9. to Baker Mayfield, again, has got this Buccaneers team in sole possession of the lead in NFC South. They are 3-1. and one. Not going to lie. Probably watched like two plays in this game, bro. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. From as, the score, though, looks bad for the Saints. That's as little saying. football as I was able to catch on Sunday, I watched almost all of this game. This is really? the only one that where I was at was the only one that was always was on Fox. <laughs> really, as well. <laughs> so, what I can tell you, Derek Carr. He was hurt though. I know he had his shoulder. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it was in the game. What I'll say is, bro, you know how I know he was hurt because Alvin Kamara got 14 targets and. And for like 30 yards. So that means check down. No, check down. he was check doing down. the Brady thing. He took he take like two reads and not there. Check down. Check down. Every single time. Kamara was bro. feasting off of these little curl routes. I was getting bro, some of them was literally getting zero yards. Bro. Like the PPR is going crazy. He set a record for the lowest yards to take it with 13 receptions. He had 30 yards. The other previous record was like 70. That's crazy. Oh, that is crazy. But yeah, Baker's playing out of his mind. Three touchdowns, 246 yards passing. Chris Godwin goes for triple digits, 114 yards on the day. Like I said, Baker's got the Buccaneers in sole possession of the lead in the NFC South. Vikings finally get in the win column. Barely. Eight-point win, 21-13 to 13 over the Panthers. Bryce Young continues to get... Pretty much ragdolled behind that Panthers offensive line. 
their receiving core continues to not get any type of great meaningful separation either. Yeah, just a terrible situation, bro. It looks like a first a first overall pick and a first overall pick type situation. That's what it looks like. And the Vikings still suck. <laughs> I don't care if you guys won. You guys still suck. Jettas is the best. Everyone else kind of sucks. Definitely. The Chargers go to 2-2, two and two, put two wins together. They win 24-17 to 17 over the Raiders. Josh Jacobs still can't really seem to get it going. It's only 3.4 yards per carry in this game. Him and Devontae Adams both spoke out and said that they are tired of losing with this Raiders team on top of Aiden O'Connell, who honestly did not play terribly from a passing perspective, but did fumble the ball three times and lost two of them. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Khalil Mack almost like broke the sack. Uh, he, he did also have there. six sacks in this game. All of those were Aiden O'Connell's fault, wasn't it? Yeah, Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. Bro, I'm watching this guy. I'm like, bro, throw the ball. Move. He's just like, all day. <laughs> all day. And I'm like, sack. I'm like, throw the ball. Like, what are you doing? So, looks like a rookie. Chargers. Yeah, I guess. Got to win, I guess. Brandon Staley still needs to get fired. Thomas keeps uh, saying that. Hey, when you, you win. You couldn't say it more. Last game that we didn't touch on, 49ers 35, Cardinals 16. They easily and handily beat the Cardinals. Joshua Dobbs still, though, has not thrown an interception on the season. 814 yards passing, four touchdowns, no picks. He's top eight in the league in QBR on the season. This Cardinals team is not as bad as I think people thought they were going to be. But look, when Brock Purdy is 20 for 21 passing and Christian McCaffrey has 106 yards on the ground and 71 through the air and four total touchdowns, it's going to be hard to beat this 49ers team. Yeah, and it, <clears throat> a team that has so many stars for Christian McCaffrey to clear in a way be the best person on the team just shows how good he is, man. Like, he's insane. I mean, we should have known with it, like putting an elite, an elite running back in a in a Kyle Shanahan system, it would be top tier. And exact, that's exactly what it is. 100%. But what I will say is, that music is gas. I, bro, music. I was that literally about gas. to say I felt like I was just on ESPN for a Bro, that joke was so lit, bro. We got we be doing that We're, every single that, time, bro. That is going to – we're about to clip that into its own video and post that separate bro. every single week that we do that. That was gas, bro. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. yeah. We're doing that every time we recap, bro. <laughs> and look, if you're a brand and you want to sponsor the Off the Glass podcast, Rapid Recap. Every single week, hit me up, DM me. You, I'm, I ain't hard to find, like Dion said. Yep, that was that was OD. That was that made running through it so much fun. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, like you said, what, what what are you most looking forward to here in Week Five? I think Thursday night football is not gonna be a great game. I think it's yeah. Chicago at <laughs> Chicago <laughs> at the uh, But but what what matchups you you got your eye on this week? Uh, I mean, the obvious one is is uh, Cowboys Niners. Mm-hmm. That's just that's the game of the week for me. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, at the end of the day, as bad as my Steelers are playing, the Ravens Steelers matchups are always ones like good ones to watch. It's always defensive battles. So I mean, I, I'd say my pick would be Steelers Ravens. I know yours is definitely that Cowboys Niners one. Hundred hundred percent. I am also. I'm not gonna lie. I'm interested to watch this Philly Rams game. I'm interested to see how Philly handles the volume that Puka has been getting because their secondary has looked exposable this entire season. We just talked about how Sam Howell was able to march them down and score with no time left on the clock. He had a big day. We we just saw the Cowboys defense make Mac Jones borderline look like not an NFL quarterback. Mac Jones was looking sensational against this Eagles secondary. Yeah. I'm very interested to see that matchup as well. Um, and Jacksonville, uh, I need to see something. Yeah, because they haven't they they haven't looked good. Like no. they just flat out haven't looked. Oh, this is also why they put this one in the morning. Why is this a London game? It's a, it's a London game. Yeah. Why? I didn't want. I mean, I guess that's a good matchup for them because they did have the Falcons and it was it the Falcons and Jags last yeah, week? That was kind of gross, but yeah. low key. And I don't even think this is going to be a good game. I just want to see it because 
if they can't get it done against the Cardinals, they're cooked. The Bengals, Cardinals, if they can't get it done there, there it's the season's over, bro. Wait, the Jaguars are playing two games in England this year, bro. They're the most. They play like ten games in in England, and the next closest team played like five. Are there like a lot of Jaguars fans there or something? There's got to be. But what it is is they sent them over there, like because they, especially when they first started, they just sent like some bum team, and it was always the Jaguars. They yeah. just sent them over there, and now like that's their team, bro. Like that's just yeah, that's, that's crazy. Just they go over there. They're like the Nat. They're like the England team over there. That's kind of fire. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of fire. fire. They probably really do got some like diehard like Jaguars. Yeah, there. that was a lot of the people over there. That was a first American football game, so they probably. Oh my gosh, the Jaguars. <laughs> they yeah. like the color. They got a jersey and now they're they're sold for life. They had themselves a Maurice Jones Drew jersey. Now they <laughs> got Trevor Lawrence. Facts. That is crazy. But yeah, I, I, I need to see something from this Jaguars team because you lose to the Chiefs in a game where you had so many opportunities to score. You get 20 piece by the Texans. That first game of the year against the Colts. Was not an easy. There's a 10 point win, but it was much closer than that. The Colts had opportunities to win that game. So, I, bro, I need to see something because this team should not be struggling this much in this division. For there's no reason for it with the yeah, amount of talent absolutely. that they have and the coaching that they have. And, and coming off of last season, bro, all that momentum. No, you can't let that go to waste. Absolutely not. That, that is definitely also a game that I'm I'm looking out for. What would be your your if you had to pick an upset alert of the week? What would your upset alert for week five be? Let me look at these real quick. <clears throat> My upset alert would be, and I don't even know who's favorite. I'm just going off of who I think should be favorite in the game. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, Rams Eagles. That that was my pick. Rams Eagles. Rams Eagles easily. What? Oh my God! Yeah, absolutely. Just because they haven't looked good, and the Rams has looked better than people thought. And like you said, especially if they're getting Cooper Cup back for this game, I don't know if he is. But if they get Cooper Cup back for this game, they can torch that secondary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely torch that secondary. The only thing that worries me is the Eagles' like pass rush getting to them. But the Eagles haven't looked great. The Rams have looked better than expected. The Rams could definitely upset that. Upset. Um. Upset them. And other than that, Cardinals, Bengals. If the Bengals, that was what I was about to say too. <laughs> <laughs> the Bengals offense don't pick it up. Cardinals can win that game for sure. One in four for the Bengals would be crazy. If you, if they lose if they lose the game to the Cardinals, the, the season already might be over. I'm be honest. If they lose the game to the Cardinals, the season is over. Shut down Joe Burrow for the rest of the season. I'm not gonna lie. Crazy. You should just do that. I let as a Jamar Chase fantasy manager. I hope they don't do that. But like, if they I'm better about, not. That, that, come on now. I'm Chill talking out. about like <laughs> as a real life. Like, just, bro, the season's cooked, bro. You're done. It's like it's funny because it's so conflicting. Because like I got Jamar Chase in fantasy in like multiple leagues, but then I'm a Steelers fan. Like I want the Bengals to like fall flat in their face all the time. <laughs> like I hate the Bengals. So it's like bittersweet for me, man. man. I always tell myself I gotta stop drafting people in my division, bro. I don't want to root for any of them. I, I did used to feel that way, and then Jalen Hurts helped me win a championship last year. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, guy for life. It's tough. Um, wh- what are you expecting to see from J-Mo this week? Now that he's back from his suspension a little bit earlier than expected, I expect him to not use him, bro. I don't trust nobody on the Lions. Like they just, bro. J-Mo came back last year and they put him at gunner. That like, that was crazy. <laughs> that's insane work from them. But honestly. If they actually do what they're supposed to do and like allow him to play football, I expect him to open the offense up even more, bro. Because having that guy with that much speed to be able to stretch the field, bro, with Amon Robert in the intermediate routes, Sam Laporta running those inter- inter- intermediate routes, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. guys, to stay in school, yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, and, and if they ever would, would put the guy on the field consistently, you put Gibbs anywhere, just put him on the field, bro. Just give him the ball. Like, I, I get it. He's not big enough to be like a workhorse 25 carries a game, but he can get more work than what he's been doing. Like, bringing him in slowly, cool, I get it. He can get way – like, there's no way Monty should get 32 carries. I, mm-hmm. I'm not hearing it. I'm just not. There's no way he should get 32 carries when you draft a guy 12th overall at a running back. He can get some love, bro. 
But I, I expect him to open that offense up even more and make that offense like it's already a top, like one of the best offenses. But man, it's gonna get even scarier when they got that field stretcher out there. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see it um, purely because, like you said, I think it's gonna add that added wrinkle. That verticality is gonna do so much. It's, like how, it's gonna be so hard to guard Amon Ra on those short intermediate routes, knowing that Jamison Williams is. Jamison Williams is coming to blow the top off the coverage every single play. Yeah, bro. I'm excited to see it. Jared Goff, man. He's been hooping. Yeah. Three and one. The North look like it's going through the D. I, apparently. Like I said, I thought it was going to be a little bit more competitive. I'm going to be honest. It still has a chance because I, I thought uh, Jordan Love was going to be better than a lot of people thought. But, I mean, right now, man, it just looks like it's the Lions division to win for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I'm excited for week five. Like I said, we, we keep inching closer to this perfect part of the, the year where you get that, what is it, like three or four month span where you got NBA and NFL going at the same time. And that's where we thrive out on the podcast. That's content galore. You can't run out of things to talk about. It's fourth quarter, man. It's, just, it's the best time of the year. It's beautiful. And you get Thanksgiving and Christmas? Nah. Fourth quarter, best time of the year, man. They cooking. And, and bro, and winter the best season. Debate me. I don't know about all that. But nah, it, stop the cap. He lost me with that one, Chief. I'm not going to lie. 100 degree weather or zero You live in weather? Texas, bro. That's just, why. You live in te- – I mean, honestly, I see where you're coming from. If I live in Texas, yeah, the winter probably would be the best time. Not up here. Well, but when I was cold. up there, I liked the winter better. I like the winter better too. Nah, bro. That's just not it, bro. Snow. Give me it. negative 10-degree weather over 110-degree weather any day of the week. I'm straight. I'd rather be hot. I I'd would rather, rather be, be freezing. Up. I'd rather be Because you know what? Night. I could I could be booty butt butterball naked and still be sweating, but if it's Everyone if it's this, zero bro. degrees, I could get the hoodie on, I get the long john on, I get the thermal, the Under Armour on, put the bubble coat on. We layered up. Everyone said that if it's cold, I could just put clothes on. What is hot? You can't take clothes off. I don't care, bro. I don't. I don't want to walk out looking like the Michelin Man, and I'm just like just <laughs> bubbled like, up. I don't want to like do, do it on Christmas Story. Yeah, like I don't want to do that, bro. I don't. Ah, it's it's a must. It's a must because I'm te- bro. After this, some this is this was one of the not even one of this was a record breaking summer in Texas. Austin set the record for most consecutive days over a hundred degrees. It was like thirty or something crazy like that. That's kind of insane, though. Bro, I'm I'm bro. I was driving back from Houston yesterday. Saw a forest fire. Literally, just was so hot. The grass lit on fire. <laughs> like what bro that's not okay we were in the middle of nowhere on the highway and firefighters are spraying water into the forest bro just i don't know just poof forest fire could you imagine what well, you really think about it like that's <laughs> bro, could, like, you, could you imagine being like a caveman like y'all have really have no understanding of science and stuff and like seeing that happen you, you bro i promise you you think the world is ending Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just like you were just sitting there, bro, and the grass just poof, just catch you on fire out of nowhere. Insane. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. But, yeah, look, I- I'm sitting here. I lived the 100. I- when I made a trip to Dallas in August, it was 108, bro. I stepped out of my car, and I I swear to you, sweat, boom, instantly, within five seconds. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not gonna. I don't be in a hunt one ten. So like, I just, I, I try like not to be, to but me. it's a. Ne- I gotta step outside at some point. Yeah, <laughs> that's foreign to me. One ten is crazy, but yeah, negative ten is also crazy. So I don't know. I need like a happy median. I need like something in the middle. Mm-hmm. That I look. Can't. That's that's like a a northeast summer or a winter down here. Yeah. Maybe that's what that. Maybe that's what the plan is. You need to get two houses. You need to get one in like texas and you only live there from like october to february and then from march to september you up north bro facts that's you what people ne- do you never have bad weather ever that's what people do man you'll never see anything below 60 and never see anything above 80 i need to hold my mic like this i feel official when i do this that bro i be doing it honestly because sometimes when i'm sitting like this it's like 
Uh, let me let me, I need to lean back so my back don't start locking up old man over here. Old man Jenkins. <laughs> lean, lean back in the chair with the mic. I'm like, oh yeah. Comfortable. I, I can't do that. My my green screen will start tweaking. So I just <laughs> I'm gonna start just going like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel official like this though. Bro, where did you get the cover from again? I need to get one of those. I feel like my mic is echoey still. I just bought off Amazon. I was thinking about putting a tube sock over it. I was wondering. If it, <laughs> <laughs> it probably would. It looked crazy though in the pod, but it probably would work. <laughs> wow. It was gonna be certified though. Nike check. Just oh, do geez. it. A Nike tube sock, just a Nike check. I'm dead. Hey man. So yeah, this is this portion of the, the in real life podcast. Uh the in real life section where we you know we just talk about stuff, just ramble. <laughs> anything. Literally anything. Um, right, let me let me do one last peru. I think your mic just yeah. turned. And something just happened. The setting it, just tweaked. And yeah, it disconnected itself again. <laughs> well, look, that that's a sign. We need to we need to wrap it up. Yeah, can you can no you way. hear me or no? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, well, let's wrap it up. That's gonna do it for episode thirty three of the Off the Glass podcast. If you made it this far, and you're on the audio platform, go over to YouTube. If you're already on YouTube. Drop a comment. Let us know if you made it to the end of the video so we can respond and let you know that you're a real one. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe to the channel on the audio platforms, five-star review, pre-download the show, and subscribe to the socials that you see on screen. We're going to be back, continuing to bring the mix of NBA and NFL content. Stay tuned. We're going to be getting an interview soon with a Spurs insider. That's really exciting. We're going to be talking all things Wemby, and shout out Devin Vassell, too. Got himself a five-year, $140 million extension. Well-deserved for him. One of our, one of my breakout candidates. Guy I think that we both are expecting to really blossom with Wemby there. So shout out to him. But, but definitely stay tuned for that. Um, we're excited to start getting interviews on the podcast. We're leveling up, man. We're, we're taking the next steps for sure. Um, yes, that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.